Sometimes there are places we go that become so familiar we stop noticing the details. Maybe it's a commute to work or a building we go into and eventually take for granted. 207's Don Kerrigan says he has probably been inside Maine's State House a thousand times, but never paid attention to one particular aspect of the place until he met a woman in the town of Dresden, an artist who noticed it on her first visit and decided something had to change. With just a small bit of paint. I am uh, trying to shape her neck a little bit better. And delicate strokes of the brush. And then I work on the, uh, her necklace. Jerry Whitman crafts a portrait a little closer to perfection. Up here. Jerry has been an artist for years, originally doing landscapes. She has a, a beautiful complexion, so I'm trying to, to make sure that I captured it um, uh, in, in the right skin tones. And because she lives just a few miles down the road from the main state house, Jerry wondered if maybe she could get the chance to paint the portrait of Governor Mills. And then I took my granddaughter to the Capitol to show her what I was wanting to do. And at the Capitol, I realized there are no women paint, there are no women portraits hanging there. There is Margaret Chase Smith. Margaret Chase Smith, Maine's legendary senator of the 1950s and 60s. But all the other portraits she found were men. How can I tell my granddaughter, you can do anything you want, but hang on these walls? Then one day, Jerry's state senator, Eloise Vitelli, made a campaign stop at her house. And she said, is there anything I can do? And I was like, yes, you can. You can answer this question. Why are there no women hanging in the Capitol? Why is this, why has, we're, clearly in the 2000s, you know, in the 2020s, and it's still the same as it was in the 1800s, in the early 1900s. Why? The senator said it was a good point. So Jerry Whitman has set out to change things. She is now devoted to painting portraits of women who have been elected to the legislature or Congress in Maine. Like former Senate President Libby Mitchell, former legislator and U.S. Senator Olympia Snow, and current Speaker of the House, Rachel Talbot Ross. My favorite one is uh, Rachel Talbot Ross, the Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. I, there's just something about her that just, that glows. And I, since the moment I did that, I have loved it. Former Republican leader Ellie Espling posed for Jerry's camera. All the others, she says, are based on official photos from the legislature or congressional offices. So you like these? Oh, I love them. I, I love, I, I, and you know, I don't even, the only time I look to see if they're, what side of the aisle they're on, is when I'm trying to, uh, to, to make sure everybody's equally represented. Jerry did the research and found there have been 479 women elected to state or federal office in Maine since women got the vote in 1920. That includes Dora Pinkham from Fort Kent, the very first woman elected to the legislature in 1922. She won in 1922, took office in 23. She lost in 24, but came back in 26 and won a Senate seat. She should be represented way better. She started this whole thing. A hundred years later, we have a female governor. Do you ever have to start over? Oh, yes. <laughs> Each of them, says Jerry, played their part in Maine history, including Sarah Gideon, former Speaker of the House and former U.S. Senate candidate. And you don't want it to be like hard, crisp edges on the face. You want them to be soft and rounded. Jerry says each of these portraits, when done, will have taken about 40 hours to paint. The, these are not meant to be... Um, an official portrait, what these are meant to do is to bring attention to women who have served. For now, this is a labor of love. No one is paying her for the portraits. Jerry works a regular job stitching boots at L.L. Bean. 
She plans to complete the first 25 portraits, then take them up to the State House for a show in March during Women's History Month. We have come a long way, but you know what? If you look back, you don't see that history, and that's why this, this is so important. There are photographs in the State House of women elected as Speaker of the House or Senate President, but Jerry Whitman says Maine's history, Maine's women, and young people deserve more. How many did you say since 1920 have been elected in Maine? 479, up to 2022. So you've got a ways to go. i got a ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> I will probably be working on this project the rest of my life. So. And that's okay. That's okay. Jerry Whitman says somewhere around the Capitol, all these women deserve a place on the wall, just like the men. There's a whole lot that's fascinating about that project, including that this is going to be her project for the rest of her life. Yeah. I mean, how many artists do you know who take on something like that? It's a big, it's a big, um, big deal. And I'm just thinking, as she was saying, like, it's 2023. Like, she took the words right out of my mouth. Like, yeah. It's time that we see more women hanging up at the State House. I love that. It's really, I, really cool. I can remember when I started out as a reporter a long time ago and was covering the Portland City Council, mm -hmm. and during a break or whatever, I would look at the photos. They weren't paintings, but yeah. photos on the wall of the previous city council presidents or mayors or uh, whatever. Uh, and. Um, you know, it was just one white male after another, after yeah. another, decade after decade after decade after decade. And that's the way it is in, yeah. s in, in, in state houses, in city halls. It's the same story everywhere that the women did not come in until relatively recently. Mm -hmm. And even then, when they started coming in, in small numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, you heard her, 400 plus yeah. in the last 100 years. It's pretty amazing. So we're, we will let you know when Jerry's exhibit will be at the State House. I'm sure you're going to want to check it out. Her first batch of portraits does include one of Governor Janet Mills, but Jerry says she still hopes to be one of the artists considered for painting the governor's official portrait before she leaves office. Coming up 